Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to Tottenham Hotspurs training ground for this media conference ahead of an Alzheimer's Society International between England and Belgium at Wembley Stadium tomorrow night, joined by Gareth Southgate and ahead of winning his 50th cap for England, Declan Rice. Um, before we get underway, just a reminder that if we can keep uh, the first round of questions to three questions each, just to ensure a fair spread across the room. We'll get under with Rob when you're ready. Gareth, good to see you. Um, your squad's been decimated by injuries, hasn't it? I mean, before you even able to pick a squad and, and, and since as well. But we did see Jude Bellingham, Cole Palmer and Jordan Henderson out there training. Can you, can you update us on the, the squad fitness generally? But are those three specifically able to play 90 minutes, do you think, tomorrow night? Um, Hendo, probably not. Um, Cole uh, is back into training, so yeah, that, he's, that's possible. Um, uh, Jude, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, he had cramp the other day, so he's missed quite a bit of football recently. So actually, he's he's ready for games. Anybody else struggling? <laughs> uh, no, everybody else is is uh, has come through training, as far as I know. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Declan. Straight to you on the eve of this very special milestone. Um, huge congratulations for that. First, Thank I know you. you haven't quite done it yet, but we're hopeful. Um, you got your first England start five years ago today against Macedonia. Um, so 50 caps in five years is pretty extraordinary, really, especially when you're still only 25. Um, how, what's the journey been like for you, and, and, and how important is this England for you? So important. Um, I think I've grown so much as a player as an, and as a person since I first come into the group at 19. Um, I was probably a little bit, a bit of a nervous, um, nervous player when I first come into to the England squad. Um, but as time's gone on, you know, I've played more Premier League games, more games at higher levels, big major tournaments. I think I've grown in stature in this side, and um, you know, I've enjoyed every single moment of it. You know, 50 caps is, you know, it's a pinch me moment. You know, it's going to be an honour tomorrow night, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. You've become an, in an integral part of the team for both your club and your country. Um, and of course, they're both trophy hunting this season as well. Um, by my reckoning, you've played 45 games already this season, with the business end still to come and the Euros in the summer. Um, that's more than anybody else in this, in this England squad, by the way, 45 games. Do you feel that weight of pressure and the importance you are for both club and country? Um, and, and do you ever worry about burnout? Not at all. Um, you know, I I absolutely love it, to be honest with you. I think my, my first few seasons at West Ham, I played a lot of games back-to-back, -back, got used to playing European nights and then playing on Sundays, so like three games a week, coming away on international breaks. So I absolutely love it. Every time you put on the show, whether it's for England, Arsenal, um, it's an absolute honour and I want to play as many games as possible. You know, When I get to the end of my career, I want to look back and say that I've played X amount of games and you know, hopefully have a long list of um, trophies to come to come with it as well. Alex. Hi, Gareth. Uh, Ollie Watkins started the match the other night against Brazil. So is the match against Belgium Ivan Tony's chance to show what he can do? Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, Ivan will be involved in the game, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I have to say with, with everything that's happened, the original idea of the or plan for the week is a little bit different in that um, we're probably finding out about more players. But... Also, that's good. that's really helpful. It's been um, to see all of those players against high-level op opposition uh, will help us to make better decisions moving forward. And the other night, Jude Bellingham got a lot of attention from the Brazil side, and you said he dealt with it very well and learned a lot of lessons. But is it also useful for the team to work out what what to do when a creative player like that is targeted by the opposition? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think Conor Gallagher got fouled as, as many times as anybody in the, in the game. So um, it was a different sort of a game. I think in a competitive game, there would have been more cards which would have stopped that. Um, we, we could have ended up playing against 10 men, but in actual fact, it was a better exercise for us to play against 11. So um, uh, 11 against 10 would have disrupted the experience for us and it meant that we were really challenged right the way through the game. And one for Declan, please. Hi, Declan. Uh, Gareth said uh, after the Brazil match that you've gone to the next step in your career. Do you feel like you've gone to another level this season? Um, I think I've been playing consistently well throughout the season, for sure. Um, I think my position's changed a lot in terms of you know what it was at West Ham compared to now in terms of in a positional sense. Um, it's very similar to what Gareth wants here. And 
and everything seems to be you know starting to click together much more in that position so look, there's still so much room for improvement so many things I can get better at um, but, you know I'm really enjoying playing in the six and um, you know in the eight as well scoring goals so I'm enjoying being flexible. Gareth McCall Walker injured can you tell us who will be your captain and why tomorrow? Yeah well Declan is here it's his 50th cap um, he has great leadership experience already at, at a tender age um, and I think it's a brilliant opportunity for um, some of our young players now to show leadership um, and to experience that where you know some of our core group Kane, uh, Trippier, Walker, Maguire not with us so different feel about the group different dynamic and that's a great um, opportunity for other people to step up to lead um, to grow and uh, that's important because a lot of the players involved uh, that are with, with the squad now they're the future of the team as well for the mid and long term and the more of those experiences they can have that's that's really helpful for everybody. Declan, your reaction and how it will feel to walk out of that tunnel at Wembley and your message to the fans who will be looking for a big showing before the squad's named. Yeah, look, it's um, speechless, to be honest with you. I'm absolutely lost for words. I think when he when he said to me last night I was going to be captain, I, I gave him a hug, shook his hand and said, you know, thank you very much. Um, you know, I owe him a lot since I first come into the team. He's always made me feel at home. I've always felt so comfortable playing under him and... Like I said, I've really grown in confidence. So on my 50th cap to um, walk out of Wembley in front of my family, my friends. Um, yeah, it's an absolute honour. I think you can see it by my face. Uh, a bit speechless, to be honest with you. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry. There's oh, one. Sorry. Um, this is sponsored by the Alzheimer's Society tonight, today of the match going out. Sorry, I'm already losing my words. Um, the players won't wear shirts on the back of their... Names on the back, sorry. The players will not wear names on the back of their shirts as they come out of the second half for the Alzheimer's Society. Just like to say as someone who's worked a lot with them and, and how England have been so supportive to me and my family, how much it means to so many that sit around the telly and don't have words and don't have names. But what does it mean to you and your partnership of what you've been doing with them? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's sadly probably uh, a charity and... Um, something that we're all going to deal with, um, with family, with friends. Um, it's it's a, an increasing reality of life that um, Alzheimer's, dementia uh, is going to affect us all um, in, in one way or another. So it's been great for us to be able to raise the awareness of the charity. Um, and, you know, I know lots of families who have benefited from that and who've had some really difficult experiences looking after their loved ones. Y you can't begin to imagine how, uh, how much energy, how much emotion, how much time it, it takes to look after um, your, your family in those situations. So, yeah, we're really pleased to be able to raise that awareness. Thank you. James? <coughs> Hi, Gareth. Um, you mentioned, obviously, the injury problems. Um, is this a sort of just a bit of a freak set of circumstances? Or do you, do you think this should maybe focus the spotlight on the debate about the number of English players that are kind of eligible to you? Because that debate's sort of gone a bit quiet in the last sort of few months. Yeah, I, I don't think that's for now. Um, it, it's for us to make the best possible decisions um, with the players we have available. And uh, um, you, you can't worry about what we haven't got. You've got to move forward. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different reasons for those injuries as well. I think it's more complex than just you know, people are looking back to a Winter World Cup, but every individual situation is different, frankly. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's in an incredible number that are unavailable to us. Um, haven't experienced that before. Um, but as I said earlier, that means there's opportunities for other people. And um, we saw against Brazil people really step up and take those opportunities, which is great for us as well. Do you worry, though, about the load that some of your players are going to have going into the summer? Because you work so hard in past summer tournaments at giving them a break and making sure they are fresh. But you're not going to have that time this time this summer, are you? Uh, well, our plan is still to give players um, time psychologically to recover, um, which, is the, which is the biggest aspect, I think, at that time of the year. 
Um, we're always mindful how we how we manage the players, um, and again we have to adapt our plans to whatever happens. We've had clubs in the Champions League finals before. We had a World Cup with only four or five days prep last year, so. It, it is increasingly challenging at, at international level, um, but um, as I said, we've got to make the best possible decisions with uh, with the hand we have. And given it will be in a, a bit of an experimental lineup tomorrow, and you're obviously working towards the summer, how important is it that the fans at Wembley tomorrow s sort of stay with the team and keep that bigger picture in mind? Mm. Well, I, th I think they did. Um, you know, watching the game back, 75 minutes or so. National anthem was being sung. I think people in the stadium recognised we had young players coming onto the pitch. We were still playing really well. We were actually comfortable in the game, in control of the game. And of course, one um, devastating counter attack changed all of that feel. So, what we've had to say with the team is look at all the aspects of the game that we did really well, and there were lots. Um, but of course, in that final third, we didn't produce that moment of quality. The final pass, the final cross, the finish. Um, and ultimately, that's where you win matches. And uh, against the very best, you're not going to get a lot of chances. Um, you, you might get four or five shots on goal in, uh, in one of those really big games. They were the same. It was the same, the France-Germany game, when you look through it. So you have to be clinical in those moments at, at both ends of the pitch. The, the fans were supportive. There were a few paper planes thrown, though. Did the paper planes bother you? Yeah, but I saw a couple of those after about ten minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a big paper plane man, so I couldn't look at the <laughs> look at the designs to pick up any tips. But yeah, I, I yeah I don't know. It's um, we've had that throughout. I don't think it always reflects the game. I think um, yeah, people. People can do as they as they please with their paper planes. Um, and you talked before about the, the sort of lack of number sixes available to you. D does it complicate things at all for you that probably the best option sitting to your left um, is often playing as an eight as, as well as a six for Arsenal? Does that change anything or make it? No, it's it's brilliant for him. Um, we know it's something he's capable of. He, he is a good finisher. You know, we've seen that in um, in training sessions that we've had. Um, clearly, when Calvin's been available and playing uh, at a high level. He's given us another option as a six. Um, and we're trying to find, uh, you know, Hendo has done that as a six, but not available to us this time. So we know that um, he can play it in a more advanced role, deck, but um, he's also improved so much as that six, you know, training, I think, with good players every day playing, working with his coach at his club on uh, on those receiving areas, on uh, the timing of uh, making himself available to um, to be available behind the pressure. Um, so you can see his game maturing in that aspect, which of course we benefit from as well. And just one to deck if I can on that, congratulations on the 50th cap tomorrow. Okay. Um, what are the challenges between switching between those two roles for six and eight and does it change anything when you come back to England and play more as a six? For Arsenal, they're two completely different roles. Um, the way Mikel wants his six to play is so different to what he how he wants his eight to play. You know, I think at times when I've been playing one up recently, I've been, been the highest man up the pitch um, in some occasions, and that's you know unnatural to me. Um, but I've been learning, and you know, I've been really, really enjoying it. I've said all along, I think my strongest position is six. That's where you know I've built my career. That's where I feel really confident. Um, but every time you know Mikel says at clubs that I'm going to play eight, you know I'm really excited. Um, want to go forward, score goals, drive with the ball, and uh, yeah, I'm you know I'm lucky I can play both. But there's still big big areas for improvement in uh, in both, which I'm looking looking forward to doing. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, James. Uh, Jack Pitbrook. Hi, Declan. Um, hey. Can you just expand a little bit on what specifically you've learned with Arsenal that you can take into your international career? Yeah, I think just. Like I said, the way our manager at club wants his number six to play, I think, you know, you look at the best sixes in the world, obviously Man City, Rodri, um, arguably the best, uh, how he plays, how he's always central, how he always connects between the back line and the forward players, um, how he's always in the middle of the pitch, you know, you're, you're always trying to learn and, you know, be that main player. Um, a lot of the play comes through me and it's about being present and 
always wanting the ball. And I think the more I've played this season under Mikel, um, you know, I've, I've gained that confidence and, you know, I've got better every time he's asked me to do it. And, and Gareth, since um, how does Declan's evolution compare to what you first envisaged when you brought him into the team in 2019? Um, well, first we had to convince him that it would be a good decision. Um, and I think that's been borne out by the tournaments we've been in and, and the huge matches he's played in. I mean, if I think back to uh, some of the early big games, which almost every match was the biggest game of his life. Now he's won a European trophy. Um, he's now involved with big matches at, at his club. Um, as, as has been said in the run-in and still in the Champions League and of course still huge matches with us as well so um, he was a converted centre-back at that time I would say and slowly he's learning to stay higher and higher you know not not needing to come outside the press to receive um, not not requiring um, as much time with the ball to make decisions he's always had good techniques but it, some of it is just being in that orientation of the field more regularly and getting a feel of it and playing in there and the more touches you get the more hours you spend then the more you can master it but there is ov obviously as he says um, this, this technical detail and tactical detail as a six as an eight as a centre back that's completely different so um, it's that 360 game that the very best in, in those positions is, uh, are really aware of. He's, he's got one at his club in Jorginho, Rodri, of course. Um, so they've been doing it all their lives. Dex a little bit more converted into that and he's doing brilliantly with it. And did you sense leadership potential in him the first time you saw him? Yeah, no question. Um, you get a feel for a human being and they're f often... Their family um, play a big part in that. You, you, with Deck, you could sense that stability, um, maturity in the decision-making process that he was going through. Um, and of course, has led from a very young age at, at West Ham as well. So um, he's he's already gained some some good experiences, and you know I'm pushing him in in that aspect as well because. It would be easy to take a little step back because we've got a lot of older players here, but some of our young ones have got great leadership already, and um, you know they're more than entitled to be bossing the older ones around a little bit as well, and making you know demanding of them and of us as a coaching staff and driving the team. And he's got all those qualities and the respect of everybody to do that. Thanks, Jack. Rob. Do you want to go into the last couple? Um, Declan, you've evolved with this England team. It feels like over those 50 caps. And you've seen this England team go from strength to strength, coming closer than any England team ever has to winning a major trophy since 1966. With this Euros in mind, and you having seen that evolution, do you think England are closer now than they ever have been? I think it's the, it's the talk of the town before every, before every major tournament for England. Um, it's the pressure that comes with, with playing for England. Um, I think if you look at the players that we have now, um, look at the level everyone's playing at in terms of form, Everyone's in really good form. Everyone's playing really well for their clubs. Um, we've been in close at a World Cup, narrowly lost to France, obviously lost the Euro final. I think we're close now. I think we really are close. Um, you know, England of a few years ago, I think Gareth was, was saying to us before the Brazil match, I think last time Brazil came to Wembley, it was 40% possession, sit back and counter attack. And, you know, now we're a team that want to take the ball, want to attack, you know, want to be a real threat. Um, and going into this tournament now, we also have major winners, you know, people that have been there and done it at the highest stage. So, look, it all counts on us at the end of the day. You know, we're the ones that have got to go out there and, and perform. And I'm sure we're really capable of, of being able to go to Germany and, you know, deliver history. And Gareth, last one, if, if that's OK. Um, you mentioned there you were a little bit disappointed with the final ball, perhaps, against Brazil, having got into some good areas. Had an awful lot of set pieces as well, from, mm. from obviously from, from the number of fouls that were committed. And England have always been great on, for, for, for under you, for set pieces, I remember World Cup in 2018 and just how many goals you scored from that. Yep. Is that a concern? Is that something you need to work on, maybe? It's something we have looked at a lot over the winter, actually, um, because we haven't been um, delivering um, in the same numbers over the, you know, definitely the last 
12 months um, and in particular against the, the highest level of teams. So, of course, the highest level of teams defend those set plays better. Brazil defended their box really well the other day, um, not only from set plays, but uh, when we got in dangerous areas, they dealt with the cutbacks really well. So, you know, their midfield and defenders um, did a very good job on that. But our delivery has to be more consistent and there's lots of elements of... Um, uh, runs, timing of runs, quality of delivery. There's so many aspects to a successful set play that have to be right. Um, we will have more time to work on all of those things uh, ahead of the summer, but it's definitely an area we've got to be better because um, yeah, the, for the number of set plays we had, we didn't create enough clear chances the other day. Okay, we'll end it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.